This week, of course, Idaho had to take the terrible step for the first time in its history of activating crisis standards of care. Crisis standards of care uh, means that hospitals have an ethical and legal framework from the state to ration health care. Because in North Idaho, they no longer have hospital capacity to treat everyone who needs t- treatment because of the number of very sick COVID patients swamping the hospitals. Officials in Idaho are warning that they're dangerously close to actually having to implement crisis standards of care for the entire state of Idaho. Idaho is in real crisis right now. How's the state's leadership contending with this crisis? Interesting story there, it turns out. The largest health district in Idaho is the central, uh, is called Central District Health. You see, it's right there in the center of the state. It has a seven-member health board that's appointed by local county commissioners. And this summer, as Idaho steamed toward this unprecedented collapse of their hospital system, with literally active-duty federal troops having to come in to staff beds, with hospital care officially being rationed because they are swamped with COVID patients, this summer, in June, Officials in the state's largest health district fired a 15-year veteran of that health board, a nationally recognized physician who had given mainstream COVID advice in line with federal guidelines. They fired him. The person Idaho picked to replace him to join the biggest health board in the state in the middle of this crisis uh, is this guy, um, who is a pathologist who runs a local medical lab. He says that we should call the CDC the Ministry of Truth because they're just like the propaganda arm of the fictional totalitarian regime in the novel 1984. He says COVID vaccines must be, quote, stopped. He calls vaccines a, quote, poisonous attack on our population that needs to stop now. He has also advocated for the use of the horse deworming medication, ivermectin, which the CDC, the FDA, and the drug zone manufacturers have pleaded with the public to stop using to treat or prevent COVID since it neither treats nor prevents COVID, but it's very easy to OD on it and make yourself very ill. This is how the local NPR station in Boise headlined their article about this doctor's appointment to the Central Health District, quote, doctor up for Idaho health board spot calls COVID-19 vaccine needle rape because he did, in fact, call it that. He was officially approved to the Idaho Central Health District Health Board this week. Chosen, he, was, he had competition. There was also an epidemiologist who was up for the spot and an infectious disease specialist who was up for the spot, but they went with the guy who calls vaccines needle rape instead. As the state of Idaho approaches statewide crisis standards of care in hospital rationing because of the crush of COVID patients they are contending with, there appears to be a mismatch in terms of the crisis that Idaho is facing and what its leadership on the ground is doing about it. Joining us now is Idaho State Representative Elena Rubel. Her her district includes parts of Boise. Uh, That board, which we just talked about, has authority over all the health regulations in her district. I should tell you she also serves as the Democratic leader, the House Minority Leader for the Idaho Legislature. Uh, Leader Rubel, thank you so much for your time this evening. I appreciate you being here. My pleasure. So I've been following the news recently in Idaho and the the real COVID crisis right now in Idaho, just through local news reports, looking in from the outside. Let me just ask you if I got any of that wrong or if I got any of it twisted the wrong way around. Uh, Unfortunately, you really hit the nail on the head. um, And I find it ironic that uh, Dr. Cole is referring to 1984 because it feels very much like we are living in a dystopian novel out here. Um, Mm. We have a dump fire and our elected GOP leaders are dumping kerosene on it right now. Um, They fired a nationally acclaimed leader of our public health district because he recommended masks and replaced it with a person who, as you note, (laughs) is uh, dissuading people from getting vaccines at a time when our hospitals are exploding, um, is discouraging schools from requiring masks at a time when our our, uh, school-aged child infection rate has more than doubled in just a couple weeks of school. Um, It really is a, a calamity that I see escalating. Part of the reason that I wanted to talk with you tonight and part of the reason we've been paying such close attention to Idaho is that over the course of the summer, when things got bad in a number of states, particularly in the South, uh, and we started to see in, in Mississippi, for example, in Alabama, to a lesser extent in places like Arkansas, we started to see a real crisis emerge, field hospitals going back up, federal teams being brought in, hospital officials and statewide health officials pleading with the public, sometimes emotionally pleading with the public, please, we are overwhelmed, we are in crisis, we are not providing good care. When we saw those states start to hit those real crises, one of the things that followed is that we did start to see 
low vaccine rates in those states pick up because people realized lots of people around them were getting sick. Their hospitals really were full. There was a real problem. And you started to see local politicians, their messaging sort of get more in line in terms of people needing to get vaccines, in terms of masks uh, being a wise option in a place where there's a lot of transmission. It almost feels like Idaho is going the other way, that as the crisis actually becomes a real problem in the ground, on the ground, it feels like the state's Republican leadership is becoming more radical um, and more sort of denialist about the problem. At least that's how it looks from the outside. Uh, once again, you are dead on. Um, unfortunately, it, it is absolutely a crisis of the unvaccinated right now. Idaho is 49th in America in terms of the percentage of population that we have vaccinated. Um, and the folks in these ICU units are the unvaccinated. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm in touch with the frontline workers. They told me the other day, every single COVID patient in the ICU at that point was unvaccinated. And across the state, I think it's in excess of 95% are unvaccinated. Um, and I think just about all the deaths are. Um, but what we see remarkably, I mean, we have, as I said, five alarm crisis. Our legislature is looking at coming back into session in the off season. We wouldn't normally come back in until January, but the Speaker of the House sent around a letter yesterday um, saying that he is considering calling us back into session so that we can pass a ban on healthcare providers on hospitals requiring their staff to be vaccinated. Um, so remarkably, they are looking at this crisis and the thing that they think needs to be addressed is that we need to reduce the number of people getting vaccinated and crack down on vaccine incentives. Um, so it really is something. It, it, it's hard to imagine how you could look at these statistics, how you could look at these numbers and come to that conclusion. Um, but that appears to be where we're headed. There is there is no interest at the at least at the GOP crowd right now of um, thinking of how can we get more resources to these hospitals? How can we help our healthcare providers? How can we encourage more people to get vaccinated? It's very much the opposite. The only thing they're discussing right now is how can we crack down on um, hospitals and any other employers that want their employees to be vaccinated.